Hi, the purpose of this video is not to show you how to build a foam model, but more just some little pointers that might help improve the outcome. Uh, these are just simple to apply tips that pretty well apply to any foam based model. To illustrate this, I'm actually building a Dynon um, SU26. It doesn't really matter that I've chosen this model because all of the principles will apply to whatever you're building. Um, the first thing that I do is probably start back to front to most instruction manuals and that is that I first of all apply all the decals, the transfers, and then apply some clear water-based varnish. The benefit of this is that um, once you've applied the varnish you've got a much more durable surface that's easy to keep clean and it certainly extends the visual life of the model as uh, you get to three six months in a year. It's a good thing just to check that you have in fact got all of the parts supplied by the uh, kit manufacturer and that you've got everything. It also helps you to locate things properly so that quick read of the uh, manual before you start is certainly worthwhile. I'll continue the uh, varnishing process. So as you can see, this is really quick to apply. Uh, probably the whole model is not going to take longer than maybe um, an hour max. Uh, just one little bit of caution. Uh, don't get any varnish where you've got these uh, control uh, rods coming out, because if it gets uh, on the rod and then gets dragged inside the tube you could lock these up and it's uh, very difficult to uh, free them. Well there we go the whole job's now done in fact that was a lot quicker than I thought. Well as I said it's all really about a durable outcome and this particular model has now been flying for nearly six months. We've done well over a hundred landings and pretty well all have been on um, grass, fields, paddocks, certainly not on uh, well manicured earth strips. Uh, the varnish just seems to uh, provide um, resilience when you're handling the model to pressure when you're lifting it, carrying it, even more importantly when uh, you're storing it or it's rattling around in the back of a car. So I think uh, after six months of continual use uh, this is showing uh, to be pretty good. Now for my next tip, uh, we're going to use a familiar material, it's um, just this, well I guess it's just a <coughs> wiping, polishing cloth, whatever you want, general purpose uh, cotton fibre woven cloth, and we're going to use some of this for strengthening the undercarriage. Well I certainly don't get my landings all right uh, every time, and occasionally we're going to uh, contact the ground with a little bit more vigour and the leverage uh, from these long undercarriage legs certainly um, mean that you can get weakness through the center section here and particularly where we're screwing into uh, plastic um, mounts that are mounted into the foam. It's fine at the moment because it's new um, the foam is very firm but gradually this starts to weaken and soften and then the screws pop out and then you put bigger screws in and uh, it can lead to uh, a bit of a mess which is easier to fix right up front and um, this is the way I'm intending to do this one. So we take that off and we see that we've got a carbon fibre or plastic base plate and then there's a groove through there and then fitted in there are the plastic uh, receptors for the uh, screws we're going to screw into. Uh, my proposal is to take a little bit of wood which will go in there. But to make this all solid, uh, I'm actually going to take the cloth that I've just cut and bend that round the wood. And when that's coated in um, epoxy glue, it'll act like fiberglass. And I'll pop that in, and uh, that will all lock up beautifully and add a lot of strength. Uh, additionally, I'll roll up a little uh, bit of the wadding at each end and that will pack around the uh, plastic um, locking uh, tube inside and uh, give me even more uh, rigidity. It will also spread the load across the foam and um, hopefully that will be more durable. There we have it, it's gone off, uh, we're now 15 minutes later 
Um, looks a little bit untidy, but uh, it's all about strength and that's all going to be covered up when we screw the undercarriage on. Okay, there we have it. We've got our two 10mm screws uh, now firmly attached. And here's another little tip. If you're like me and you um, tend to scrape the wing tips along the ground on occasional landing, uh, why not use a little bit of kitchen towel, uh, just cut along the edge there, and then um, glue it down with either PVA or, as I'll be using, the varnish. Uh, and that, when it dries, will just give you a little bit more uh, rigidity on the wingtips. Yeah, as soon as you apply the varnish, it soon moulds round the wingtip, and that'll almost go uh, translucent when it dries. And it's amazing, you just get that little bit of extra strength right on the end of the wing where it counts. So there we have our reinforced tips made with uh, two-ply paper towel. Um, pretty solid. Foam. Reinforced. Another little tip, uh, I'm always looking for ways to improve cooling. You've got to have airflow running over the uh, ESC and also the battery. Uh, that just means you're uh, protecting them from uh, overheating and uh, future problems. So on this particular one, uh, the cowl is getting drilled uh, just to give a little bit more airflow uh, through. Uh, the other thing is when you install your gear, making sure you've got free passage of air both in and out. Now there's not a lot of contrast on this shot, but hopefully you can just see where the varnish has actually um, joined the aerolon um, at the edge. Um, so we'll have to, um, when that's dried properly, just make sure we uh, cut that out so it allows good free movement of that aerolon. At the moment it's bridged and uh, if we leave that just overnight it'll be just set like glue. Uh, here's an example of why it's so important to check out your aircraft before going off flying. Um, I was actually just checking the cord that goes from the, or the electric cable that goes from the ESC uh, to connect to the battery and noticed that it was slightly loose. When I took off the um, heat shrink, um, yes there was a problem. The actual positive lead uh, soon uh, detached itself and that would have been uh, quite an interesting situation had I been flying uh, with no power going to either the receiver or the motor. Um, I guess that spells disaster. Look, it doesn't happen that often, no disrespect to uh, Dynam, uh, but just shows that it's uh, the builder and the pilot's responsibility to check all these things out. Well, our build is nearing completion. Uh, but a very important step, and one that shouldn't be omitted, is to just check the balance of the propeller. It's normally reasonably good when you get a plastic propeller, uh, but um, I've found that uh, some are terribly out. Uh, this one's nearly about right. Um, maybe uh, just a little bit heavy on the right side. The cost of these balances is not that great and the problems you get if you don't balance your propeller is that uh, you get a very noisy motor, um, you'll also get potential problems with engine mounts and even they can shake off altogether. So uh, you might even think you've got a problem with the motor when it's all related to the propeller. Correction is pretty simple, uh, you just uh, use a little bit of abrasive paper on the back edge of the heavy blade and uh, just give it a quick rub over <clears throat> and then we'll recheck it. Okay well that seems about right and um, I'm sure that'll give good smooth operation, it'll be quieter and hopefully we'll get good power as well. Well we've been talking about prop balancing and um, Terry's currently flying a Radian glider and uh, you actually had some 
recent experience about props, haven't you, Terry? So how did it occur in the first place? You'd actually changed the prop, hadn't you? Uh, yes, we had. We had previous prang, uh, we'd actually damaged the propeller and we replaced it. We found that, uh, I've, I've got to look at the aeroplane, unfortunately, mm -hmm. uh, but we found that the uh, motor seemed to be kicking up more noise than it should and after a, a discussion with the boys we decided that the prop probably could do with a balance and uh, so we've now done that and we found an incredible uh, amount of uh, imbalance in the propeller which is now corrected and I've got my uh, sweet flying radian back which is uh, wonderful. <laughs> so that's pretty quiet now isn't it? Uh, that's a, a, a magnificent result from where it was at. We're now in the process of binding the uh, radio and getting uh, the servos connected. Um, the only important tip outside of the normal binding procedure for your uh, particular transmitter and receiver is to remove the propeller. Make sure the propeller is not connected or sorry, not attached uh, when you start playing around with this because just uh, knocking the throttle uh, or maybe the throttle doesn't even work when you first um, attempt to uh, bind it. It can be lethal. The whole thing can just jump straight off the bench. It's uh, very important where you've got a screw lock attaching the control or horn to the push rod. Uh, and that is to use Loctite or liquid thread lock or whatever, a uh, similar type of product to the screws as um, the repercussions of something uh, coming loose, particularly on the elevator, um, again is uh, not nice to think about. Now looking at the more conventional way of connecting um, control rods to the uh, control horn and uh, it's important also to add a little bit of security where we've got a little bit of a piece of fuel tube just sliced off and wrapped around the end there and that will uh, ensure that they don't spring apart. One final tip uh, after we've been flying, where do we store them? This is a quick and simple method using some electrical conduit tube and uh, we just mount that to the wall. You've just repaired this model after I crashed it. Yeah. Uh, just give me a little bit on uh, why it's important to do uh, pre-flight. Well I repaired the model and I thought it would be all good to fly, but I forgot to check the important parts, the control horns. Just so show us. So that at the back, I put some hot melt glue on it just for today. Um, and I'll go home and put some epoxy on it to make sure it stays on. So pre-flight's pretty important? Yeah. Every flight. <laughs> what are the main things you look for? So you've got your control horns, make sure they're all connected like I didn't. Um, make sure the prop's not going to come off or the engine's going to come out. Make sure you've got the battery in the right spot. All the actual control surfaces, make they're connected. All the foam's all strong. Um, just, yeah, make sure everything's tight. Not going to fall apart. Recording, okay. You can go when you're ready. <laughs> 